What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're taking a look at a title called Archmage Rises. This game actually caught me a little bit by surprise. Uh, this is a game that's kind of a sleeper. It doesn't look like much, but like I think the visual flair is in the right areas and it's offering what is essentially a game that's dedicated to sort of like the adventure mode of Dwarf Fortress, I guess, is probably like one of the closer things that I can compare it to. This is an open world sandbox RPG where you can do whatever you like. The ultimate main storyline is that you are an exiled mage that is trying to become the king of the mages, basically, uh, through a storyline. But ultimately, you don't have to do that at all. You can spend your entire life becoming a craftsman or becoming a miner or, you know, having a house and a family and a wife. Uh, you can go on adventures. Like, really, the sky is the limit here. You can do whatever you would like to do, and the game doesn't really confine you to any real legacy unless you're chasing down the main storyline quest. It comes equipped uh, with a procedural generator. Everything in this game is procedural from the people to the quests to the locations uh, to the economies. This game actually has interlaced economies. Uh, so all of the cities trade with each other and they will have certain like hubs and they will send things to other areas. It's really kind of an interesting and in my opinion, ambitious little title. The only thing that happens is it comes at the cost of like the game not being super Super pretty. In a lot of ways, it reminds me of the old MUDs, or it reminds me of the old browser RPGs of the early 2000s, that it used to be just kind of like this mad wizard's project on some random website on the internet, where this guy just made like a massive, ridiculous, hugely populated with content RPG on his website that was all sort of like menu-based. Uh, the game does have a real combat system, and the art inside the combat system is very, very good. But everything else is more or less going to be menus. I don't know exactly how long I'm going to cut this video, but we're going to dive on in today. We're going to play the game for a bit, and if it's something you think you might like, I've got a link for you down below in the description. On top of that, you can also take a look down there if you wanted to find my Twitch stream and my Discord, just in case you wanted to hang out live. But I've talked enough. Let's go ahead and start the game. So now that I've cleared out some space for the world that we're about to generate, let's make a world. This world is called Mendenhard. Okay, and it's got a seed. As of right now, we can't change the size of the world. And we can't change, like, the layout from, like, continent to, like, peninsula or, like, you know, fractal or whatever else you might like to play on. But in the final version, I'm sure that'll be in there. This game is planned to go to early access, I think, in April. So that's actually not that far off. And this is actually a really cool process right here. While you're watching it do this loading screen... Everything that it's saying here is actually a historical event or a thing that is happening. Everything from famines to plagues to wars uh, to golden ages to great leaders being born, that kind of stuff. Everything here is actually an event that's happening in the history of the world. And in my experience, characters will actually reference it kind of in passing when they're giving you like quest dialogue or like lore drops or whatever else. Uh, we've got 123,000 unique people have been alive, 64 towns, 43 layers. Four great people have been born, and there are eight unique artifacts on the map somewhere. Let's go ahead and continue. A warm darkness surrounds you. Suddenly, the walls begin to close in. You're being pressed from all sides. Just before it seems like the weight of the world is going to crush you, it relents. You twist away, seeking peace, and it returns. You wriggle and writhe as this irresistible force thrusts you from your sanctuary. Then a deluge of sound crashes over you. Light floods your eyes. The midwife joyfully announces it's a wonderful baby boy. The baby boy's name is... Splat. There we go. The midwife proclaims it's a wonderful baby boy named Splat. Uh, what's fun about this is this adjective changes every time you play the game. I've had ugly. I think I've had hideous. I've had beautiful. I've had wonderful. I don't know if it actually has like a greater effect on the game and the game world, but it happens every single time you play the game. It could really be anything. As you grow, so do your chores. The life of a peasant is not an easy one. Still, your days are full and your nights are quiet and your companions are never far away. Who do you spend the most time with in your village? Uh, this is also randomized right here, so we can hang out with an adventurer, we can hang out with a craftsman, or we can hang out with the village children, which will kind of randomize our character, basically. Let's go with the retired adventurer. Oroward left the life of an adventurer behind him when he sustained an arrow injury to his knee. Now you help him in the stable and the kitchen, he lives vicariously through the traveler's tales of the great wide world. It looks like we have gotten an interest in... So we got plus five strength. It looks like we got plus five to handling animals. 
Our conversational interest that we can use when talking to people around the world is that we like brewing, we like food, we like travel, and we like adventure. We don't like philosophy, and we don't like fashion, and we've been given an axe as our starting weapon. As soon as you were visited by the first signs of your magical abilities, your poor parents began saving for your future education. Now you are old enough to study to be a mage. There are three tutors that you can afford. Uh, there's basically one that gives you arcane magic, there's one that gives you fire and ice, and there's one that gives you storm. I'm going with storm. I'm always a lightning mage. I can't help it. I want to be a lightning mage. But just months before passing your tests and graduating as a mage, you have been unjustly expelled. Taking only what you could steal on the way out, you enter the harsh adult world at 16 years old. Penniless, lost, and an illegitimate mage. So in this game, there are legal mages and illegal mages. It's kind of like Dragonlance, I guess, right? Is that Dra is Dragonlance the one where there's like rogue mages and then everybody else is like red robes, white robes, black robes, like they got to go to college or whatever, otherwise you're illegal? This game is kind of like that. Uh, from Sabina Cunningham on the Orenshire Chapter House of the Conclave of Mages and Enchanters in Velun. My superiors in the Conclave have learned of your dismissal from your studies to become a full sworn mage and for reasons I cannot imagine, have decided to give you a second chance. Please report to me at the Chapter House of Orenshire while I will explain the details. It seems they have a special job for you. Ignore this at your peril. Alright, so welcome to the actual game itself. We are in Orenshire. It has a population of 2,000 people. I don't know if that last zero counts right there. But either way, we are in Orenshire right now. We can enter the town if we want to. And it costs us money to walk through the gates. I assume it's like a tax or something like that. And we need to go to the Conclave, and we need to figure out how we can redeem ourselves. Because being disgraced and being an outlawed mage is really bad in this game. You don't want that. I got your letter. What's this about? Do you see anybody come in with you? No, I don't think so. You think they tell me what's going on in this province? I'm not even invited to the council. I just got a letter from a mage named Richard Gimson who wants to talk to you. He's waiting for you at the Three Paladins in Axebridge. Do what he asks and they'll let you back into the Conclave. That's all that I know. Who is he? How should I know? I'm just a chapter master. I do what I'm told. He sounds like one of those Onyx agents, though, if you ask me. Conclave mages never miss a chance to give you all their titles and honorifics, but this guy, nothing. Onyx order business. Dead giveaway. Who's the Onyx order? Shadowy. That's what they are. They don't answer to anybody but the Prime Megas. Uh, no councils, no rules, no records. They were supposed to root out renegades, but who knows what they get up to nowadays. Alright, cool. Well, let's go ahead and head on out. Now in town, we don't actually know. We're kind of like sheltered, and we've never been outside of our home. So we kind of need to like talk to people and figure out exactly where it is we're supposed to be going. So if we start out in the market... We can ask where Axebridge is. He doesn't know, unfortunately. Uh, this is one of the vendors. This is one of the people that live inside the town. You have a relationship with literally everyone you meet in this game. And you can make friends with them. You can make enemies with them. You can compliment them. You can talk about the weather with them if you want to. Uh, you can kind of just like, you know, small talk with just about everybody. And ultimately, it can lead to relationships and things. Now, let's talk to the gravedigger. The town of Axebridge is a short distance to the west. Okay, that's helpful. Uh, there are other locations you can go to, things like the Outfitter. Uh, they will offer services. You can buy things like camps, which I think is a really good idea. We do have an inventory down here. We've got our axe inside of there at the moment. We've got a little bit of food. We've got a torch. We've actually got a lot of food. So let's go ahead and get a couple of camping sets so that we can sleep wherever we want to. We will get a fishing pole. We will get a pickaxe. And that's pretty much whittled away what little gold that we have down here at the bottom. So from there, I think it's probably a good idea for us to leave. Now that we've left, uh, there's not really too much more for us to do here because we don't have that much money. Like, we need to earn some cash, either by doing quests or doing little tasks for people. Uh, inside the market, he's only got services. The graveyard, she doesn't really have anything. Inside the inn, nobody has any jobs. The outfitter needs wood, and we do have a wood-cutting axe. Uh, if you're looking for work, I need a questionable bundle of good straight wood as quickly and quietly as possible. The fewer people that know, the better. Uh, I probably won't do that one, largely because it said, like, a question mark instead of the amount. But this is the world map. Welcome. Uh, you don't really see our character on the world map. We're just kind of like this bubble thing. Uh, you travel. And travel takes time. There's a timeline down here at the bottom. 
and your character does get old, and your character will die of old age one day, and like get a disease and have some bad luck. And so that's one of those things you gotta watch out for. Uh, all these locations that we're on, they aren't just static map tiles. We can also click on them, and while we're inside of them, we can explore them, uh, we can, sometimes there's like little nodes and things around here that you can play around with. Uh, we can explore. It costs us a little bit of stamina, but we'll roll a d20 and see what happens. Oh good, we leveled up our survival to level 1. Uh, we successfully explored. You spend the day exploring. Did we get anything worthwhile? It looks like the harvest prompt popped up. There's a bug in the demo right now where this button uh, doesn't pop up. Unless you leave and come back. Apparently I can harvest roses over here. It makes our survival skill go up, so why not? I don't know if I need this many roses, but hey, we've collected some roses. A beautiful flower, perfect for decoration or for gifting. So apparently that's probably going to be for increasing our relationship with somebody. I do want to find this neighboring town. It's going to take us like 18 hours to get through the swamp. You come across an unusually nice flower bed. The shrubbery almost looks maintained. Uh, investigate? You decide to look around. There appears to be a few ways you could go about doing so. We'll cast Arcane Insight to determine that no magic is present. The flowers appear to be just that, although you're unsure if they're maintained or not. Several thoughts cross your mind as to what you might do with the shrubbery. You contemplate your options. Uh, so we can stomp on them, we can smell them, we can burn them, we can cultivate and help them grow. I don't know, cultivate them? You loosen the earth beneath the shrubbery, allowing roots to grow deeper. Gardening like this gives you a calmness. The emptiness of the air around you lets you perceive a greater depth. The smell of honeysuckle and dew. The sounds of wind and bees. Serenity is here. Did I get anything from that? You spot a wolf amongst the trees. You fail to tell if there are any more. Let's fight. You guys need to see the combat anyways. So there's the wolf. The wolf is after us. It has 40 HP and it's hiding behind a rock. I forgot to equip my axe, uh, so unfortunately, I don't actually don't know if I can equip things in combat, can I? There you go, I equipped an axe in combat. So it is plausible to equip things without losing any AP. Now this game's combat is fairly simple. I take a turn, then the enemies take a turn. Uh, we have AP down here in the bottom left. When it runs out, our turn is over. If you pass your turn with AP remaining, you keep that AP. This right here is a set of our meters. Uh, we've got a stamina meter. The red one is our health. And the one around that, which is completely and totally empty, is actually our hunger. We may be starving right now. I've never seen a player start out starving, though. Uh, since this rock right here, how much damage does our axe do? It does 23 damage. It's not letting me click my axe. I don't think it's going to let me use it. All right, well, instead what we'll do is we're going to blast these rocks out of the way. we got to do 13 damage. Oh, that's Daggerfall. That's an AoE. We don't want to do that. We want to do Magic Missile. There we go. Magic Missile. Off, off, and away goes the Magic Missile, and the rocks have been vanquished. I could fire another one at him, and I think I will do that. And we're going to give this one a little bit of oomph. There it is. We dealt 35 damage, and he resisted too. That's going to be the end of our turn, so we'll go ahead and pass, and let's see what the wolf does. Uh, it looks like he spent his turn running up on us, but I don't think that he had the AP to actually attack. He doesn't have that much HP left, so I think we can probably get away with a much lighter cast. You do get to choose the force of your cast in this game, just like you do in Shadowrun, to determine, like, is it a really big magic missile, or is it like an itty-bitty tiny magic missile? So that's kind of a cool feature. There are monster tracks left here. Yeah, you spot a bandit amongst the trees. You fail to tell if there are any more. So there was bandits and also a wolf here. Let's go ahead and run, I suppose? We rolled an 11, so we got away, and that leveled up our athletics, so that's good. I'll take that. Uh, let's go ahead and leave, and it looks like we're actually kind of in a gross bog right now. The town has barely disappeared over the horizon when you meet with trouble. With a yelp and a scuffle, a band of filthy scrawny creatures tumble from their hiding place in the underbrush into the world before you. Goblins. A croaking cry of, We wait! We kill! is the only warning you have before they set upon you with weapons that are crude, ugly, and altogether too sharp. Yeah, that's a lot of goblins. I would say that that's a, a serious volume of goblins. I'm gonna magic missile... Can I cast past him? I don't know, I'm gonna shoot that one. All right, we vaporized one. I'm going to vaporize another one in the back because goblins get demoralized easily. 
Yeah, I was gonna say, there you go. Mage say run much gold. Somebody's planning on assassinating us right now. That's my opinion. I guess he just hung out in the back. Oh, he's pinned because he's in mud. Okay, well, like, if you want to get smacked, you can definitely get smacked, my man. I got you covered. It looks like we made 44 gold, which is good, and we leveled up our arcane magic a little bit. Uh, speaking of magic, there are many different schools of magic in this game. You can research and modify your spells. As of right now, there's fire, there's ice, there's earth, there's storm, and there's arcane. Uh, but you can also modify these spells with these little slots down here. The game tracks the relationships of everybody you've ever met so that you know who you're friends with and who you're not with. I assume that later on, this is not implemented yet, but I guess you probably get your own wizard tower or something, or you get your own, like, I, I guess businesses and things that you can run, kind of like Fable style, with masters and apprentices and stuff like that. Uh, there's a wealth menu over here that tracks all the money that you're making once that's implemented. We've got a quest log. Uh, you can keep notes if you would like to. We've got our knowledge screen right here of things that we know how to do and things that we've done that we can use as conversational topics. You can do research. Uh, there are trees for all of these different magic types. So this is definitely seeking out to be one of those games that's like a full-on mage survival RPG, and I'm, I'm here for it. I fully support that idea. That sounds like something that I've wanted to play pretty much my entire life. Uh, we need to find our way to wherever this place is here in the west. There's something over there. Is that the town right there? Hopefully it is. Axe Bridge! We found it! Nice! Normally these towns are connected by, like, roads, but this one seems to just be abandoned out in the middle of nowhere. Let's enter town, and I'm gonna go to the inn, and the first thing we need to do is get our stamina back. I also needed to check this right here. It says we have full hunger at the moment, but normally there's a meter around this right here that like tracks your hunger and it's not like working right now for some reason. It was working like this is my second attempt at recording the game. The last time I recorded it, uh, it did not capture the mouse cursor. I I've had like a bear of a time actually capturing this game. Most of my software does not like it very much, but I finally figured it out. It's late at night right now and I'm knocking this out like right before it gets uploaded. Uh, let's see here. Services. I would like to sleep inside of a common room. Thank you, sir, with rested and skills restored. And then Richard Gimson is already here inside the inn, so we can talk to him. Uh, Richard Gimson, you came good. We're out of time. Are you Richard? I am. Are you ready to serve the Conclave? Uh, what's this all about? Have you heard of Aldert of Beckon? Nope. No wonder you were expelled. Anyways, Aldert of Beckon was a prominent and respected scholar of the Conclave who near the end of his life became obsessed with the magical practices of the Senendarina, the Forgotten Horse People. He claimed to have obtained a collection of ancient scrolls full of strange curving sigils and describing spells that were known in those days. If half of it is true, we've barely scratched the surface of this magic. There may be entire schools whose existence we haven't heard of. But of particular interest to us is the mention of compulsion of the will. Mind control? That's banned, right? It is very much banned. Mind control magic would be a disaster in Velun, And for the Conclave specifically, we've developed defenses but only against the few spells that we already know of. If, a, if new mind-controlled spells fall into the hands of renegades, not bound by the oath of obedience, we are helpless. The Prime Magus is particularly concerned that they might be able to influence the decisions of the Council of Jamont, not to mention the risk posed to the caster themselves by the unpredictability of such spells. Okay, so like, how would they learn these? Unfortunately, near the end of his life, he lost his mind and vanished. Aldert, though, recorded the details of his search for an ancient Senendaran artifact which he believed would reveal the secrets of the spells, including mind control. As we speak, the renegades are searching for this artifact, and we must find it first. Alright, so what do you want me to do? Before he vanished, Aldert destroyed most of his work. Remnants will surface from time to time. However, we have reason to believe that one of his notebooks has come into the hands of a mage called Cecily Cross in Aldburn. She'll probably be milling around in the chapter house. Get that notebook. It will contain clues regarding the location of the Senendaran artifact. I need your help because I can't act openly without attracting the attention of renegades. But a failed mage like you is the last person they suspect. I need you to get that notebook and use it to find the artifact. Do this and you will be inducted into the Conclave. Receive all the privileges and responsibilities of a sworn mage. Do it quickly and there may be more work for you in the future. Okay. I don't really want to, but we need to pass some time here. Until all the shops and whatnot open. There we go. Can I get anything at the out? Where is Aldburn? It's somewhere in the northeast direction. 
was the last town we went to, not Aldburn. I'd have to look at the name of it. I don't know where we started out at. I forgot to memorize the name. Anyways, back to the market. So we need to go to northeast. Hopefully there's a road running off that town to the east, and we can find it over there. There's a golden ale. It looks like... Oh, it's tracking the prices right here. As you can see, there's also full-on trading in this game. You can load up on, like, a whole bunch of textiles if you want, and then you can take them to a place that has tailors or, like, docks or healers or whatever else, and you can make more money. Might be worth trying. So those cost 60, and they're at a 25% markdown. Let's soft barter. Hey, we soft bartered. Very nice. Our persuasion is leveled up, and it took the price down by, like, five bucks. Can I do it again? No, you can only barter once. Sure. I'll take, uh, I'll take two cloths. That sounds all right to me. We're going back to a dock right now anyways. So maybe we'll be able to make a little bit of cash flipping some goodies. Orinshire is the name of the place. I want to look, and I want to see if there's a land bridge. Oh my god, there's a land bridge, and I went around the long way. I am an idiot. Uh, when you see tracks on the ground, it means that there's monsters around, and you can actually examine the tracks like so. And if you follow the tracks, they will take you to full-on dungeons. And the dungeons in this game are kind of like... Three, they're 3D, all right? The rest of this game is basically like a browser game, but the dungeons are 3D, and you can actually, like, look around and, like, rotate your character's head with free look, and there's chests, and there's fights, and there's things of that nature that are just like the normal combat. Kind of interesting. I wasn't paying attention. What did I see here? I don't know what I actually saw there because I wasn't paying attention to the text. That's going to be my bad. That's going to be my bad. Uh, let's see here. A large caravan passes with carts loaded to the brim and a hired company of guardsmen. A single cart seems to be lagging behind the pack. Upon getting closer, you see the wheel is broken, and they are attempting to replace it. I'll help fix it. I have good strength, right? I got that plus five. Wow, my strength skill is a banger. Okay, apparently I'm like a brawny mage. I'm like, beef cake! You know what I mean? I've been taking my, I've been taking my raw berry supplements. Convinced you could help, you step in to look at the problem. The issue seems to be the weight. The cart is just too heavy. Uh, let's power lift this bad boy. Yeah, just deadlift this thing, dude. I'm that strong. I'm showing off for the ladies at this point. A 43, son! You walk right up to the cart, squat into a lifting position, and hoist the entire thing up and out of the rut without breaking so much as a sweat. Incredibly impressed, the men pull up 200 gold to hand to you. They thank you and continue on their way to catch up with the caravan. There you go. See, and that's why you go to leg day right there, so that your deadlifts look good. Uh, this place had a harbor. So I want to go in, and I want to sell this stuff, but I need to rest in a common room first. I'm just going to sleep in the stable, because it doesn't matter. We still have full stamina, so it doesn't really matter altogether what room we use right there. I can sleep with the horses, dude. I like animals. Animals are my friends. I sleep with a... I sleep with, like, 20 cats in my bed every single night, all right? I don't really, uh... I don't really mind. What services do you offer? If I sell the cloth over here, will I make money? Hey, I'll get 89 apiece, dude. That's not bad. Yeah, sell them both. I'm gonna soft barter, too. No, I critically failed! Is he going to give me less money? Oh, apparently it messed with my relationship with this guy. He's offended. Yes, I will sell at that price. You're a rogue. We'll take them anyways. I just wanted to level up my persuasion. All my stats are so bad right now, except for apparently just being beefy. Just being crazy like Hugh Jackman buff. All right, we got to go find this other place. Let's see if we can find it. It's probably up here. A moment of your time. Who are you? Is this an ambush? Nothing of the kind. I want to talk to you about something we have in common. A problem that we share. The Conclave. You're a renegade. Yeah, that's what they call us, but we call ourselves unfettered. Unbound. The free mages. I know you met with Richard Gimson. What did he tell you about that artifact? He said it contains the secret to forbidden mind control spells? Possibly. But what if it could teach us to heal, to speak the tongue of birds and beasts, to raise the dead? We could be on the brink of a new age of magic here, but if the Conclave gets their hand on that artifact, we'll never know. It's going to vanish into the deepest, darkest test chambers of the Garden, and it will never re-emerge until, of course, they decide they need it to maintain their iron grip on Velun. 
It's too dangerous for me to seek this artifact myself. I'm risking my life by talking to you. But if you can find the artifact and bring it back to me in Orenshire, I will personally teach you one of the most powerful band spells recorded therein. How would you use this artifact? Use that word again, renegade. For somebody that was kicked out and cast aside by the Conclave, you seem loyal to their teachings. Before we turn the secrets of the Sinandaran artifact over to any who wish to learn them, we the Free Mages will use the knowledge we gain from it to sway the Council of Jamont in our favor. We have worked in the shadows for years to bring this proposal before the Council, and now we have one chance to curtail the power of the Conclave for generations to come. Unfortunately, there are some among us who think that freedom can only be won with bloodshed. They're few in number, but growing, and if this plan fails, I fear that the violence is going to be inevitable. Who do you think sent those goblins after you? Help us keep magic peaceful and free. I'll think about it. Don't think too long. The Council of Jamont is making its decision in a matter of weeks. Okay. Fair enough. Can I fish inside the body of water? Oh. You detect two spiders moving through the brambles. However, we did level up our perception skills, so hopefully spiders aren't too scary of an adversary. Oh, that guy's hiding behind a tree right there. Claw the dread spinner and fang the ghost creeper. Well, the ghost creeper is about to be the ghostly magic missile. You can get it. Uh, and then this tree right here doesn't have that much HP. I'm going to pass my turn and see what the spider does. I don't know what he did, and there's no combat log for me to check. Oh, there is. There it is right there. What did he do? Uses web shield on splat. Okay. I'm going to have to blast this tree out of the way. So that I can actually send a spell his way. I don't think all the environmental effects are in yet. Because some things when you destroy them. They leave like rubble and like broken chunks of wood. And things like that. And then other things just disappear completely. So I'm assuming there's still development going on. How much HP does he have? 48. As we go up and down. It gets really really expensive. I'm just going to do a 5 stamina cost. And then it looks like we hit him for quite a bit. He's got 26 HP left, though. Let's gamble with a four. Hey, we got him. Ki, 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 ma, ma, ma to you, too. Uh, we got 43 gold from that fight. And we got 70 XP for our magic. Let's see here. Where is, where is the magic skill at? There it is. So for the arcane school, we're kind of like leveling up right now, I suppose. There's also tracks here. Oh, takes 25 skill to figure out where this lair is at. We would have to critically succeed. I'll check. I mean, you never know. You might roll a 20. You don't know until you try. You might as well. I'm sure it's the spider lair. Whenever you run into enemies, their lair is nearby. And I would like to find a lair, but I feel like the game is not going to make it easy on me right now. I don't really want to explore for eight hours. Nothing in the grasslands, huh? All right, well, we'll go up to here, and let's get into town, and we will wait till it opens. And now we will enter town. Our stamina is still okay, so I don't think we need to go to the actual inn and get ourselves, like, a brewski or whatever. I think we'll be fine. We do need to find this guy that we're supposed to be talking to, though. And Cecily Cross. She's doing nothing. She waves. Hello. Are you Cecily Cross? Welcome to Aldburn. How can I be of service? I'm looking for a notebook that belongs to Aldert of Beckon. How do you know about it? Wait, did I buy a stolen book again? Yes, you did, and it was stolen from me. Please give it back. I should have known it was too good to be true. If you just tell me what's drawn on inside the front cover, it will be yours. Uh, it's the curving sigil. That's correct. Well, it's yours. My apologies. It's okay. You didn't know that you were buying <laughs> stolen goods. All right, so we have the book, and that means we can study the book. Like, they said we had to bring it back to somebody, but they didn't say that we couldn't read it first. So we're reading 14% of this book per day, and hopefully it will give us some new spells or something. So we'll go ahead and give that a try. Uh, if we go to the market, do they have any, like, goods here? Apparently she's friendly and she likes us. She got a missing eye, though. And they've got jewelry. That's kind of overpriced. Do they have anything that's being... Actually, everything here is being sold for... A lot of money at the moment, so I don't think there's really anything here that's worth taking. 
And it looks like we've got tools, we've got potions. Can I sell? Oh, I can sell the roses here. Nice. Yeah, sell all three of them. I mean, it's 54 gold that we didn't have before. Now, is there an armor or anything here? There's a weaponsmith. But I don't think that there is a armorer. Oh, no, there's an adventurer's outfitter. They have a crowbar for bashing doors, a 10-foot pole that allows us to trigger traps, trail rations, hatchets. We've already got one of those. Some acid that we can put on the ground in combat to keep the enemy from rolling up on us. There's some options here. I'll probably take another torch just in case. I would like to see a sort button added to the inventory where it sorts everything. It's not a huge deal, but it would be nice. It would be real nice to have a sort button. All right, so we can go to the docks, and apparently we can book passage on ships, too. Can I fish at the docks? No loitering. She's hostile. Oh, she doesn't like... Can I compliment her? If you say so. I mean, that moved her from hostile up to cool, so that's not that bad. I'll take it. That's better than her silently hating my guts. You spot some tracks. Good. I want to track something. We're not very good at survival, though, unfortunately. We failed. Okay, we'll try again on the other tracks. We failed at that one, too. We can explore. That might actually give us... <gasps> oh, I thought we rolled a 20, dude. You spend the day exploring. Uh, did we find anything there? Maybe I have to roll higher. 13? Doesn't actually look like we found anything, but then again, the little harvest button doesn't always pop up in the current build, so... Let's just head on down the... Ooh. Brigands. Uh, yeah, I'll fight some bandits. Let's do it. Let's get down. Uh, it's not really plural bandits. It's just like one bandit. I'm gonna bash this rock on my turn. I actually haven't figured out if it's possible for you to move forward on the map yet. It's one of those things that I haven't been able to glean. I'm gonna put a magic shield on myself. And as you can see, it puts kind of like this filter over the entire screen as though you're looking through a globe of magic, which I very much like. That's like super cool and kind of immersive. And we'll go ahead and pass our turn now that we're done. And we have mad AP right now. Apparently he didn't move up on us. I don't know why he didn't, but let's vaporize him. Uh, we scored a 32 right there. Let's give it another go. And we vaporized him. A little bit of cash, a little bit of XP. I'll take it. Uh, are there tracks or anything here? Oh, good. Our survival skill's up to four now. Good. I don't think we found anything, but hey, our survival skill went up. We need to rest. We're kind of, like, tired right now. If I get attacked by something, I am effectively defenseless. Uh, let's go ahead and get her services right here. I'm going to stay in a suite. I think I've earned it. The adventuring life has been good to us so far. And then we'll rest in a common room right after. Although I would like to see an option in the inn that just fully restores your stamina no matter what. Uh, that would be really, really nice. All right, we got to take this back to the conclave. You hear a strange song coming from somewhere nearby. Uh, I'm not very creative, but you can become a bard in this game. Did I mention that? You can actually just become a medieval rock star if that's what you want to do. You can get super famous for being an artist or, like, being a singer. Oh, no. You sing out, but you're pitchy and off-key. The singing stops, and you hear a sh voice shout, Who's there? You shout back a response, and the voice asks that you can come join him if you wish. Yeah, let's join him. You make your way back to a small brook, and a young man sits near the water. Propped up on several rocks, they sit and strum their lute, clearly in the middle of a song. I'll sit and listen. You ask to join to simply witness the songwriting process, and they agree. Around an hour in, the bard is caught on a particular lyric. They cast their spells without any doubt, then goblins all came a-running out. Uh, all of the body parts strewn about? And the Goblin King had his eyes gouged out. It's morbid, but I think it's quite a thrilling recounting of the battle, don't you think? He thanks you for your help in completing the song. I like how there's like little meaningless interactions that don't matter. 
Some people might find that annoying, but I, I like things like that. I'm assuming there's going to be like art and stuff on those cards when you're doing the events and things too when the game is finally finished. This is going into early access, I think, in April, so there's still going to be a lot of stuff to be added. We got to decide if we want to be a loyalist, like to the Conclave, or do we want to become a renegade? I kind of like the idea of becoming a renegade. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Being a renegade would be kind of cool. We also haven't finished reading the book yet. So, like, maybe we go on further adventures and just kind of see what happens out here. You spot some tracks. Yeah, but I... Oh, survival skill 5. That's easy. Some dense skeleton tracks lead off to the southeast. They can't be too far away. There are more tracks. You spot a spider coming down the hill. Run! I don't want to fight him right now because I'm on a skeleton hunt. I'm not afraid, I'm just busy with other tasks. More skeleton tracks. The tracks lead to a lair, the southern outpost. Okay, let's go inside. Alright, so we're inside our first dungeon. Uh, we have a map over here. I really, really like this grid map. I think it looks really good. Uh, we can walk back or we can leave the dungeon. I haven't quite figured out how to change the facing of my character yet. Uh, I don't even know if you can change the facing of your character. I would love to turn around. And we've got a facing on the minimap. But, like, you've got to click this arrow right here to go back. And so... Uh, we're inside a room, but it's too dark to see. We're going to have to pop the top off a torch here. There we go. Uh, there are items that are interactable, so you do kind of want to, like, take your cursor and look around and just see if you can find anything. But it looks like we've got a couple of doors in front of us. Let's go to that one. The skeletons are startled by your sudden entrance. Are skeletons scary? Oh, skeletons are easy, bro. I'm about to nuke these guys. They're about to have a terrible day. Skeleton number one. Vaporized. Skeleton number two, get wrecked. I am the Archmage. All will fear me. And the enemy is eliminated without any problems. Uh, we can go to the left or we can go backwards. I don't know what that heartbeat is, but it means there's probably a trap or something around. I'm going to put up Arcane Insight. We'll just cast it on ourselves. Doesn't look like there's any traps in here. Let's go through that door. We can search the table. You found a common wine. Okay. Is anything else searchable? You found another wine. Apparently I'm in here just like looting the wine cellar and getting mad crunk. All right. That crate's not searchable. Apparently I'm in a library. Are there any books? Oh, there is. You found a major corpses. Okay. Is anything else lootable? I very much like how you kind of have to scan through and search the room to find things. It's really, really nice. There's one. You found a treatise of understanding. I'm going to read all these books, dude. We're a wizard, so we're allowed to do nerdy stuff like read books. All right, so we can go that way or we can go that way. That way is back the way we came. Let's try over here. I don't really see anything. We got beer. None of that stuff is searchable. I think that's about it for this room. Let's go left. Left. Big spooky statue. Evil fog. Ooh, treasure chest. You find 175 bucks. Hell yeah, we're coming up in the world. Can't trust nobody. Gotta look over your shoulder constantly. Is there anywhere I have not been? Not really. It looks like actually we've pretty much hit the entire dungeon. Okay. 
Uh, we can use the arrow keys to just, I'm sorry, the wasp keys just to move back to where we came in. I don't know if the enemies respawn, but it looks like we've mostly cleared the dungeon. So we'll get on out of here. That was a very, very easy peasy little baby dungeon. If I wanted to explore... Can I do that? Uh, I don't really want to fight spiders right now. Hey, I critically succeeded. Wait, what? I rolled a 20, bro. I rolled a 20. Oh, I am offended right now. Was that a 20 or was I looking at it wrong? None of the enemies seem particularly interested in attacking me today. How much HP does he have? Oh, you done messed up, son. You done messed up. I feel like I'm kind of getting better at survival. Oh no, I'm almost out of stamina, dude. Can I run? No, oh, I rolled it too. Oh, we have like a plus six now though because of our athletics, nice. I think I'm gonna head back to Orangeshire and take a little nappy boy. Uh, book complete, you learn that the artifact is located west of Damyal. Okay, I forgot that I was reading a book, but sure. Uh, we also have Major Corpses, Rare Monster Lore. So it gives us plus 15% damage against bandits. Oh, but we can only study books at the Conclave or a library. Because we need, like, reference material and whatnot. Okay. Yeah, we're reading it very, very slowly. So I bet it speeds up if we read it in a library with, like, supplementary help. We'll wait till the town opens, and then we'll enter. And I guess we'll just drop the book off and be a good little boy, because that's what we were supposed to do. I suppose. I don't know where dumb y'all... Oh, no, it was the place... Oh, it was the town to the west. That's right. We can't do it here. It was the town to the west where we did that. Do you know where Damyal is? It's in the southwest direction of here. Okay, good. Now I need to sleep in your bed, so please let me do that. I feel terrible and my butt hurts. There we go. I feel better. Uh, will you buy... Oh, I can't sell things here. What if I go out to the market? Can I sell the things that I found? No, I can't actually. Okay, so we've got these common wines and we've got these beers and whatnot. But it looks like I can't really sell them. Maybe we can find a vintner or something like that that'll buy it. Compliment? You always have something kind to say. Flatter. Aww. I critically failed at flattery. Feels bad. Our relationship is cautious right now. What about you? Do you want to be friends with me? If you don't mind, I have things to do. Okay, like... That's fair. That's fair. All of us have tasks we need to undertake on any given day. I'm gonna head west, I guess. You become hungry, you will automatically eat food from your inventory. Trail rations are prioritized, but if you have none, food that expires soonest and is overall best will be picked. Cool, cool. There's gotta be a spider lair around here. Like, we've been attacked by so many spiders in this area. Nice, we leveled up our athletics, dude. Hell yeah. I like that we can see the spiders on the map. You need to, I bet the spider lair is like right here, like right here. Alright, we made it to Axe Bridge just in time. But... There he is. Wait, does he not want... He told me to bring him the book, right? Find a bandit vault west of Damyal. Oh, he wanted me to find the artifact. Okay. So the book was just like a, a step that he gave us in order to find the artifact. But yeah, it's a really, really cool game. Archmage Rises. I, I, I'm very intrigued by this. I want to see where the early access goes. Um, there's a lot of depth to this. At the exchange of it not really being crazy well animated. And obviously there's bugs and stuff in this demo. But the game looks pretty cool to me. This definitely feels like one of those games I would dump insane amounts of hours into. So check it out. The demo's available right now. I will catch you all later. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games. I'll be back tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. Bye, folks.